welcome back. It's been a long, long day, and we are finally at the championship match between Kenny overcoming Theron in the semifinal game against Nicholas, who we just saw on stream, close out a set against Yoko. We started, uh, today we started at around 1, uh, 1 p.m. and now it's 8. It's 7 hours, quite a long day. Uh, we have 72 players, and now we're down to the top two of the Masters division. Exactly. I mean, it's going to be a really interesting match here. We've, both, we've seen both Kenny and uh, Nicholas on stream. Two very, uh, I would say, different play styles. Um, and we'll see just why in a moment. But it's going to be a clash of speed control in this, in, in, in this finals for sure. And who can control uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the position of the game is going to be able to come out top here. I mean, speed control is one of the very important things in Pokemon. With uh, moves like Shrek Wheel, Thunder Wave, being able to move faster than your opponent is quite important thing. As it simply means that you get to deal the damage off and potentially land the KO first. And we're going to jump right into it. Nicholas, we've just seen on stream the Metagross, Golduck, Terrakion, Zapdos, Sylveon, and Hydreigon. Kenny's team, not unfamiliar to many of us. Amoongus, Kinkelder, Heatran, Cresselia, Kangaskhan, and the Sylveon. I mean, as we've seen in uh, Kenny's team, he has like, he has like a Chigo, he has a Chigo mode that is possible way on. Uh, Nicholas, other than his Sylveon, it's a bit hard for him to deal with that. He doesn't, it doesn't seem like Nicholas has a uh, outright way to stop Chigo. Playing around it is going to be a bit difficult. He has to make this one. He okay, has to and make in this case, you know, Kenny's objective here, like you mentioned, has to set up that trick room. Uh, Nicholas uh, has a lot of faster and rather frail Pokemon in the Golduck, the Terrakion, and the Hydreigon. Uh, Sylvia, Metagross, and Zapdos slightly bulkier, but if Kenny can set up a trick room, uh, things might not be looking, things might go south real fast for Nicholas here. Yeah, so the main factor for Nicholas here is that whether he can uh, not stop trick room, as I don't think he really can in this situation, but how he can play around trick room. However, Running Trigger means that Kenny has to bring his Cresselia, which, uh, you know, Hydreigon and Metagross deal rather comfortably with. So I could see that lead possibly coming out from Nicholas, and I would, it would be interesting to see what um, Kenny decides to lead in order to counter that, that and now, predictably natural. And now we're going to the start of the finals of Singapore's uh, Regional Championships in 2014 here in uh, Anchorville Community Center. So, uh, give it up for these two. <laughs> All right, let's give it up for both of these players, guys. They played a long way to get to this finals. As we do see Kangaskhan and Cresselia out against Metagross uh, Sylveon. So, half, call it, call it half right there. Uh, Metagross showing its face, but the Hydreigon probably at the back. I mean, um, Nicholas, I guess that's identified that Sylveon is one of his uh, important Pokemon to help deal around with Chigo being a slow Pokemon in of itself. However, Sylveon alone can't exactly help Nicholas. In that situation, you have Kangas kind of the field, which can actually make short work of Sylveon. Uh, Sylveon is not, uh, it's not naturally bulky in his physical side. So, in room, I think Kangas can do really well. And can even land a sucker punch onto uh, Metagross if he, uh, can, if he decides to. The question though is whether Kangas can, which Pokemon Kangas can wants to fake out here? Uh, it could fake out the, the Metagross. Uh, trying to prevent any damage done to the Cresselia, but at the same time, Hyper is going to do a lot of damage to the Kangaskhan in return. So, needs to evaluate his, his priorities here. He might even just go straight for the, the you know, the, the return onto the Sylveon here. As, uh, you know, setting up Trigger Room and allowing Sylveon to get off, uh, you know, powerful Hyper Poison faster than his own Pokemon may not be the best option. So we see Cresselia actually switching back, not going to set up the Trigger Mon that's uh, possibly a good choice and Heatran comes out. Uh, Heatran is quite a good matchup here against Sylveon, uh, being able to take his attacks comfortably and also deal damage, uh, especially back to Metagross. Metagross is going to go Mega though, going another 4 set of arms. Is Kangaskhan going to me go Mega as well? Yes. The, probably the animation we've seen the most of today. You know, Kangaskhan going Mega Evolution, gaming that, that parental bond ability as no fake out, Iron Head coming straight out from the, onto the Kangaskhan, return goes onto the, onto the Meta Metagross, dealing a good amount of damage actually, but at what cost? Sylveon's gonna get up a Hyper Voice here. 
and Kangasun hangs on. But we see an interesting position here where on he took Ken and Tinny, Ken being good work off that mental goes. However, Kangasun's kind of difficult position right here. He most likely will be able to land a hit out, but not too sure. I, I would actually disagree, as uh, now Metagross is probably going to be dissuaded from attacking and landing itself into an untimely Sucker Punch from this Kangaskhan. In, in addition, Heatran here threatens both the Sylveon and the Metagross with, with super effective Heat Wave on the Metagross and completely walling uh, Sylveon here. The question is whether Kenny wants to sacrifice his Kangaskhan this early in the game. True. I mean, Kenny does have actually a strong attacking, uh, attacking options here. And Nicholas, if he wants to make use of uh, his own attacking options, he has to leave his uh, Iron Matter Ghost out in the open for attack. Iron Hit is going to go straight out onto the Kangaskhan though, picking up the KO. Critical hit just to Gravy on top of that. But Heatran here is going to get off a free uh, Heat Wave here. The question is, will it, tar will it connect? Earth Power comes out Earth Power going to come out instead onto the Sylveon Sylveon's? instead. You know, probably predicting a, a protect there from from um, from Metagross, but the prediction not paying off for Kenny there. I'm feeling, I'm feeling Kenny probably over predict. I mean, it is a, uh, I mean, it is the last game. Having a long day of sweets and it's probably makes someone tired, so it's a bit hard to think uh, things through. But it's still kind of a weird play there. Um, the first uh, return onto the uh, Metagross is probably taking the Metagross my switch out, but and I'm not really too sure. Not all is lost yet though for Kenny, even though he's lost his Mega Pokemon, you know, he still has, a, he's still in a pretty decent position here between Cresselia and the Heatran. Hydreigon is going to come in here, though as Hammer Armor oh, comes out oh, from the Metagross onto, onto the Heatran, that's going to be a huge play, picks up the KO. And Nicholas just, has just stolen a huge amount of momentum going into, into game one here. Cresselia does set up the trigger, but is this too little too late? As, uh... Kenny doesn't really have a strong way to deal with Metagross outside of his Heatran. And having lost Heatran there, Sylveon not going to be doing a lot of damage to this uh, this Metagross instead. You know, lots of over predictions from Kenny there. Probably, you know... And Nicholas just played the turn straight, turn after turn. And that just shows, you know, how volatile a game like Pokemon can be. You need to get your predictions spot on, or else you might end find yourself in a very, you know, Poor position, which Kenny is in now. Well, uh, what what Kenny needs to do now is to find a way to somehow take out Metal Ghost. Maybe he has Shadow Ball on his Sylveon, who knows? But once he takes out that Metal Ghost and Chigum is up, he still has a chance. But it's a bit hard to say right now. The question now, of course, is does Nicholas protect with his Metal Ghost, uh, and does Sylveon go for the Hyper Force, or does it go for the Shadow Ball? But we see Hydreigon actually switching out here for his own Sylveon as Sylveon uses the hidden power onto what I presume is the Metagross hidden power ground not enough to pick up the KO though because uh, does fire off that ice speed onto the Metagross trying to get the freeze probably does he get it? No oh, freeze! Cool. Iron Head does come off onto Sylveon gonna pick up the KO there yeah it's pretty much Nicholas, uh, Nicholas's game one here right here because uh, Sil support Pokemon not being able to deal much damage back uh, as we seen some time earlier where uh, Suikun was left on the field not really being able to deal much damage or so. So, I mean, these support Pokemon are quite important for you, but being in on the last Pokemon on the field, not something you want it to, to happen. Okay, you're gonna forfeit that game there, not wanting to reveal any more information on his Cresselia, as we are, are gonna go into game two. Nicholas taking, uh, taking game one there in a very convincing fashion, but Kenny, Kenny there making lots of risky uh, predictions that did not pay off. So I'm not sure whether he wants to continue making that kind, of, that kind of rash plays in the finals. If, if he does and it pays off, then yes, he could uh, end the game very quickly. But if he does not... I mean, uh, so far, he has shown in game one that making those risky predictions has not been working out for Kenny. So he might end up uh, deciding maybe going for the safer play instead next two rounds. Considering that, especially in round two, if he loses this round, he uh, pretty much loses uh, the chance of getting the top in a championship. So, getting, uh, making safe plays will probably be more important as you really, really do not want to lose it to 
Nicholas here, of course, has a bit of cushion going into ga game two here. He knows that even if he loses the second game, he has another shot at uh, taking the finals in game three. Nothing much to say really about game one. Um, it was pretty much uh, over prediction on uh, Candy's uh, uh, Candy side. So if Candy can uh, find a way to play better in uh, game two and realize that maybe Nicholas is not going to make the uh, choices that he, uh, Candy thought Nicholas is going to make, I think Candy can actually pick up. I think Candy's win condition here has to be to set up the, the trick room and get Heatran on the field to you know exploit its earth power and heat wave, being super effective against almost every single member of Nicholas's team. At the same time, uh, Sylveon can help pin Sylveon and Kangaskhan can help pin down the relatively frail Golduck, which would otherwise prove some problems to uh, Heatran here, as well as the Hydreigon. Kenny does have the tools. Uh, to be uh, to defeat uh, most of Nicholas' uh, Pokemon, it's just whether Kenny uh, uses it well or not. Uh, so now we're going into game two, and let's see what Nicholas and all Kenny sends out. Alright, let's hear it for these two players, guys. Game 2 of this finals! <laughs> we see Nicholas going in for Hydreigon, Metagross this time, as Kenny is... But it's not for one after the shiny, shiny animation. <laughs> but Kenny's kind of angry, so yeah. Same leads from Kenny, but Nicholas opting to switch it up despite taking game 1 here. Um... You know, K Kenny's pretty much free to set up Trick Room here. A fake out onto Hydreigon and a, and a Trick Room from the Cassalia. Uh, followed up by, you know, powerful attacks into the, either the Hydreigon or the Metagross. It's gonna be very, very strong here. In fact, Cassalia could probably even eat up a, a Dark Pulse without without much problem, so... A Sucker Punch? I mean, if Cressela, uh, if he wants his Cressela to eat the Dark Pulse, uh, he can actually go up to the Sucker Punch until the Metagross uh, dealing heavy damage for it uh, uh, at first. However, it's still uh, mid either way, Candy is still as a good position to set up Trick Room regardless of what he decides to do. No switches coming out from either side this time. Metagross is going to go straight for the Mega Evolution. Um, of course, we've seen that Kenny's Kangaskhan is slower than Nicholas's Metagross. Kangaskhan is going to go Mega here. What's he going to go for though? I think a great play for Kenny here will be the Sucker Punch. Like, the, the Metagross right from the get-go, but going for the safer play this time, faking out the, the Hydreigon here, doing a lot of damage with the critical hit, getting the flinch, and the Iron Head gonna come out onto the Kangaskhan though, so uh, Cressela gonna be able to set up that Trick Room for free. Yeah, Iron Head would have been a dangerous thing against the Cressela, as a fish could happen and not allowing Cressela to launch a Trick Room. Good thing for Kenny, Nicholas decided to opt to go straight for the Kangaskhan, maybe trying to take it out as fast as possible as Kangaskhan is the damage dealer uh, present now on Kenny's side of the field. We have seen the life orb on uh, Nicholas's Hydreigon before though, so it's highly possible that it is carrying that protect. And if it is carrying protect, uh, Nick Kenny can't just carelessly low kick into the Hydreigon slot for fear of losing his Kangaskhan right from the get-go. Oh, taking that previous damage roll from the from the from the from the previous turn, Kangaskhan probably is gonna be able to take another uh, Iron Head. So Kenny has options here for sure. Uh, especially now that he's got that Shirk Room up, reversing the speed turns of every single Pokemon on the field. Well Kenny uh, yeah, Kenny can take an Iron Head, but I would imagine Nicholas also uh, may opt to go double target double targeting on the Kangaskhan, seeing that Cressela itself can't really uh, deal much damage on his own to give you. Kenny recognizes that Cressela has done his job though, gonna switch out into the heat trend. Uh, what does Kangaskhan go for? Kangaskhan withdraws the, the Hydreigon, not gonna be wa not wanting to take that low kick, but out comes Sylveon, so good switch by Kenny to bring in his... Oh, but the return! The but it goes out onto the Sylveon! Predicts the switch! Gets the KO on the Sylveon on the switch! Huge play by Kenny! This is pretty much the play that should have happened in the first turn, rather than the return on the uh, Metagross. The return on the Sylveon, as you can see, pretty much just takes it out entirely. It does take it, it the hammer out from the uh, Metagross, but it has taken out Sylveon quite a big threat on Nicholas side of the field, being able to, uh, now unable to launch out the Hyper Voice anymore. Hammer Arm though is going to take out that Kangaskhan, and um... But Kenny is in a great position here to bring in his own Sylveon, as Sylveon Heatran here is going to just wreck so much havoc on whatever uh, Nicholas is going to bring in here. Oh. But... I mean, Nicholas using Hammer Arm on a Metagross 
Can you can, is Kaiser Smart in Zombie as he doesn't lose Metagross? I really don't know. That Metagross is really fast, and I'm assuming that since he, Kenny's running such a, such a, you know, such a powerful Trick Room team, that he's got to be running minimum speed on his Pokemon. And if that's the case, I'm pretty sure a, a max, a maximum speed minus one ham arm for our Metagross is still not going to be able to outspeed this Heatran here. You have to also remember that Heatran was at was had taken chip damage earlier on in game one, and I don't expect a hammer arm to be able to one hit KO this Heatran uh, for a max HP here. Well, apart from the fear of uh, Metagross possibly uh, quote unquote out outspeeding which is unlikely to happen due to his high speed to begin with. Uh, as you said, yeah, Kenny is very much free to just launch out a uh, hyper voice and hit with as uh, if you can't, if you resist one, you'll probably just take the damage from the other. Exactly. Uh, and you see that spread moves are so strong in doubles, despite the fact that you know they have that 75% damage nerf. Um, the ability to t damage both of your Pokemon simultaneously. Hyperboy is gonna go straight off, no protects coming off. Hyperboy takes down the Hydreigon. Is Heatran gonna be able to get off this heat wave before? And Heatran he now sees the overheat. The overheat, the overheat connects onto the Metagross, and Kenny picks up a double KO on this turn. Fantastic turn for Kenny here, and Nicholas has to be thinking about game three now. Uh, whatever Pokemon Nicholas uh, brings in, he's gonna take a uh, he's gonna take a single target uh, Hyper Voice from Sylveon. Uh, even with uh, Heatran's uh, special attack decreased by two, I imagine uh, Hyper Voice and oh, he's a attack. Okay, well, it's definitely gonna lose to uh, Hyper Voice. Yeah, I mean, with Caselli at the back and Sylveon on the field, Nick is gonna need a lot of protects and a lot of rock slides to close out this game three, game two here. So he, he is gonna go for it though. Good play by Nicholas, trying to play to the, the only outs he has. As Hyper Force Earth Power is gonna go into the protect, but there is still one last turn of Trick Room left. Well, I mean, even though he, uh, Nicholas can... Oh, he failed. The protect <laughs> fails, Hyper Voice does come out. Moment of Truth, does Terrakion have that Focus Sash? It does have that Focus Sash, so good information for Kenny to take into Game 3 here, knowing that his opponent, uh, Terrakion has that Focus Sash. I mean, actually, Nicholas, uh, probably want to rush the bit there. If, when, uh, he had a chance to protect, right? He, the one thing he could have done, actually, is to take a bit of his time to think of what he could do for Game 3. His rushing and pressing into protect is uh, kind of limiting his own type of thing. Um, which you have to make, uh, take advantage of the first two games. Knowledge, uh, knowledge, planning. So, I mean, then again, uh, Nicholas maybe has his own way of doing things, so who knows. Uh, he did uh, end up showing off his own focus sash, so... Yeah, and I think going into game 3 here, uh, Nicholas's priority has to be preventing that trick room from getting, being set up. You saw the moment trick room set up, and Heatran and Sylveon were in. He had no answers to his opponents of Pokemon. So that is definitely what he wants to go for here. Yeah, and but as mentioned earlier, it's a bit hard for Nicholas to really stop trick room outright. He has to either double target or to Cresela, which Kegaskan big there poses a problem for that as a fake out can come out. Uh, this allowing a double target, allowing Cresela to set up trick room for free. And I think we're gonna head back into the match right now as we are going into game three of this finals of what has been a very, very tiring and long reach comes <laughs> here. Um, def of course not as, you know, not as, mar not as a marathon as some of the other regionals overseas where, you know, you have the top 16 cut, 8 rounds of Swiss, but definitely a, the, one of the longest tournaments that our players have ever had to play locally. Um, I mean, it's like approaching 9pm and we're, stu <laughs> we're still not done with the, with, with the finals yet. But, you know, honestly, what more could we ask for? We've had an amazing semi-final match, we've got a really interesting semi-final, sorry, a really amazing quarter-final match, an uh, interesting semi-final match, and now we're treated to a Game 3 of of the finals. Game 3 is kind of a good way to finish things off, and we actually even had some very interesting matches throughout the Swiss uh, round, so, not, so quite good matches we see today. Both players taking the time to choose. Nicholas really has to choose his Pokemon correctly so as to avoid being uh, swept by Trick Room uh, on Kenny's side of the field. Uh, Silver was probably a good choice on Nicholas' side, but I would imagine Nicholas' uh, Silver was not like was not the minimum speed possible, as Nicholas doesn't seem to be prepared for uh, for Trick Room as much as uh, some players are. 
Definitely. Between, you know, the only Pokemon on his team that's really very, you know, on the bulkier side of things is that Sylveon. Everything else on his team, including that uh, his Choice Scarf Goldog, is really fast and really frail. And is weak to the common types like Fighting, Fairy. Uh, he doesn't have a normal resist, which is always an issue. Well, he does have normal resist in the, in the Metagross, which is always an issue against uh, teams of Mega Kangaskhan. But even then, Kangaskhan covers both the Terrakion and the Metagross with Sucker Punch and Low Kick, respectively. Either way, if Kenny could set up a tree room and do does the Heat Chain Signal combo as he debuts, then he would have done well. Oh, Kenny actually sends out Heat Chain and Cristiano this time, while Nicholas sends out Terrakion and Metagross. We might be in for a pretty nasty turn one. Um, I can kind of see what Nicholas is going for. He realizes that he doesn't have many outs to Trick Room, and if you ask me, he has to be going for that Rock Slide Iron Head flinch chance on Spacelia to prevent it from setting out Trick Room there. But at the same time, Kenny can't play too recklessly with his uh, Heatran, as a close combat into that slot is going to take it out right from the get go. Yeah, putting Heatran against a uh, Terracon is kind of like a weird, it's kind of a bad choice for Kenny. However, Nicholas is kind of playing, <laughs> playing with flinches here a bit. Uh, it is his best choice after all. Uh, exactly. He can't really do anything much against it. As mentioned before, he can't really stop it. So this is uh, one of the only ways he could do it. So he just went for it. Uh, Nicholas, of course, going to make out his Metagross for the third time in this series here. Interestingly, Kenny switches up his uh, leads after you know winning the second game. And Heatran is going to protect. Rockside is going to come out though. He is going to fish for that flinch as uh, connects. It does connect. Does with a bit of chip damage. I hit. It does connect with Crystal too. Let's see whether Crystal can pull off this trick room. And it's the side gets off the trick room. The trick room does come out. Cheers, cheers erupt from the crowd. That is a massive, massive trick room. Rockside, that 30% chance of flinch. Iron Head, that 20% chance of flinch. And Cresselia attacks through both the flinches and gets off the trick room. And suddenly <laughs> things are looking south for Nicholas here. <laughs> he truly is not being much free to just launch off uh, Heat Wave against Metagross, and Cresselia can launch off uh, psychic attacks against uh, Terrakion. So, Kenny now has a very big lead thanks to that one trick room. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> at this rate. I mean, it's still not over for sure. I mean, Trick Room does last for that four turns, and if Nicholas is going to be able to stall out that that, that four turns of Trick Room, um, he is going to be able to, you know, try to get more damage onto this Cresselia. Now Kenny has a choice. Uh, now Kenny has a choice whether to keep Cresselia into attack or maybe switch it out to something, say like Sylveon. Uh, while keeping it, it does not really deal as much damage as you would, would hope to. Switching out does pose a risk of what if Nicholas decides to attack to that slot instead. Like, if he does switch out to Sylveon and say Nicholas, oh, he does, there's no switches instead. No switches, no protects, he may come right out, drops the Mega Metagross with the life form, drops the Mega, following up is probably a Psychic. Well, breaking the Sash on the Terrakion, so that might help a lot. The Psychic does come out of the Terrakion, is it enough to KO? No, no it's not, it unfortunately, but the close combat does come off onto the Heatran here. But crucially though, that Mega Metagross is off the field, and uh, at this point, I think it's safe to say that Heatran has done his job. Yeah, uh, you have get, uh, you have pretty much got rid of Nicholas' uh, main uh, Mega, uh, his main form of attacker, and now Ken and Kenny has Trick Room up, so Kenny has his own Mega left, he has uh, his own spread move, like still have a spread attacker like Sylveon, as you see here. And <laughs> we're gonna see the showdown between the Sylveons here, Sylveon versus Sylveon. Uh, we've seen three of... Nicholas of Pokemon here, and three of Kenny's, uh, the Sylvia and Mirror, obviously. You have to imagine that Nicholas's last Pokemon is that Hydreigon, which definitely does not <laughs> want to show its face at this point in time. Well, a uh, uh, hyper voice from uh, Kenny's Sylvia and an attack from Cressella, maybe onto the uh, Sylvia itself, might be the best situation here as you can deal as much damage as possible onto uh, Nicholas Sylvia and uh, KO the uh, Terracon if he doesn't protect. Nicholas probably should start uh, protecting though, try to stall out Sugar, which he didn't in the previous turn. Terracon going to go for the protect, which means that Nicholas's Sylveon did not protect. Uh, we, we, Sylveon goes to the Hyper Voice. Does a good amount of damage as both players are going to trade Hyper Voices here. Cresselia going to get the Psychic Up onto this! Onto this! The Sylveon reading the protect on the Terrakion there, fantastic play by Kenny. 
completely reading Nicholas like an open book that that turn. And that and this means that you know uh, Hyperforce is. Chimes the double protect fails. Hyperforce should be able to pick up the KO here. Let's take a look. Oh, a double, double KO. KO. So Seragion goes down, Sylveon goes down, and it is Hydreigon against the world. It should be Hydreigon. I mean, I would be surprised if Nicholas didn't bring Hydreigon. It, it is, is Hydreigon. And the candy pretty much won this game. That is pretty much going to be game. <laughs> Shows you how much, how important it is to actually be prepared against Shigeru. If you're not prepared for any possible team combinations or tactics that an opponent might throw at you, you're not gonna win. <laughs> and Kusara goes to the moonlight! Oh, he back! 50% of his health! Kenny going for the full... <laughs> I want to say disrespect, but actually it's a, it's, a, it's a good play there, as he did count his Shrikun turns, noting that Shrikun was gonna expire, and therefore trying to go for as much damage as he can. Hydra and going to go for the, for the Earth power there onto Sylveon. Strange that he didn't go for the Dark Pulse, trying to get the flinch onto the Sylveon instead. But in this case, Hyper Voice down goes Hydreigon! We have yeah. our first Pokemon Regional Champion! Kenny takes the finals! Congratulations to Kenny. What, 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 a, what a set. What a set. Kenny has shown to have a commanding lead in second game and third game. In the first game, he didn't really do it much as well as uh, he didn't set up his Chico. <laughs> He made over predictions, but he learned from that from the first game. And the second and third game, he learned from his first uh, game in, uh, mistakes in the first game, worked on it, and got, them the, got him the win. And I wouldn't even say that he stopped predicting. He realized that he wasn't predicting at the correct level. He wasn't reading into Nicholas's mind well enough. And that's the mark of a great consistent player, being able to recover. You may lose one game. You may that's that's Pokemon. You may make misreads in one game, but that's what best of three gives you. That's why we have best of three as top cut to give you that chance to, to recover, recover and, and to make, make the appropriate adjustments, adjustments to take the finals. And, and that, that is exactly what Kenny has done here. here. So uh, props to Kenny for winning the uh, regionals, of Singapore regionals, 2014. And and I guess we're gonna go on an interview for. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think Kenny's, Kenny's still, still soaking, soaking in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere here. <laughs> he, can't, he can't believe he's just won a regionals. That makes Kenny, you know, two top cuts in two regionals. Third place in the in the Perth regionals. First place in um, in Singapore regionals. And watch out, Malaysia. He's coming for you next. As Kenny is traveling to Malaysia regionals as well. Well, he is, he is a contender to look out for, especially uh, next week on Malaysia regionals. So those who are participating next week, do prepare for you. Do prepare for Chikru. Don't make the city stick. Oh, no, no, don't prepare Chikru. We, 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 I mean, we, we want Kenny to win. win. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, fine, uh, let Chikru win. <laughs> Alright, I think we're gonna have Kenny on stream. In just a bit. <laughs> Alright, and once again we have Kenny here on screen, our newly crowned Singapore Pokemon video game regional champion here in Singapore. Give it up for Kenny, guys. Alright, Kenny, I want to talk a bit about... I know I probably interviewed you like, you know, five times already within the last month. What I want to talk about is um, how you played out this particular best of three. Uh, you notice that... In, I noticed that in the first half, you made some plays that didn't pay off. Um, why did you make those plays and what, 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 first of all, why did you make those plays? Um, I think that because since he can make it to the finals, some of his moves should be, um, should be very different from, what, from other people. So I decided to play something very different. Yeah. But obviously, you know, that didn't work out. So yeah. um, how did you adjust your mindset going into the, the next two games? Um, I think it's some, some, some love is involved. Yeah. 
So uh, yeah, obviously yeah. in the in the last round, the Cresselia oh, hitting yeah. through the Iron Head and the yeah. Rock Slide flinch was definitely a really yeah. big play. Uh, what do you feed your Cresselia? Why why is why is it able to attack through so many flinches? Like, teach <laughs> us teach us your your trick of of, of training Cresselias. I think it's luck. Yeah, it's still luck. Yeah, I think so. All right. See, this is the market. This is the market for a good player, guys. He knows when he's probably had a lucky break, but being able to capitalize on it um, is is why he's sitting here right now as a regional champion. This is after you know what was probably a disappointing Perth regional semifinals for you. You oh, yeah. finally have it. The, the regional win you've you've, you've been a, a, aiming for. What's next? Um. Yeah. What what, what are your plans going forward? What what, do, what what what? How are you gonna are you gonna change your team? Are you going to you know just stick with the same team and and you know try to do the best with that or? Yeah, I'm not sure because now my I'm I'm blank. All right, <laughs> and blank, as so, you can see, yeah. a good a good magician always keeps his cards close to it, close to himself. Can he giving us a little a little you know sneak preview about what he may or may not do at the next tournament? But everyone, your new regional champion, Kenny Lee. Thank you. All right, and um, for those of you who've been joining us on stream and all everyone here as well, thank you very much for staying. Uh, the atmosphere would not have been as great without you around. Uh, thank you to um, the you know to the Mirage Island for hosting this this uh, this this tournament, as well as uh, the Anchor Vale Community Center for allowing us to use their, their space here. Uh, finally, last shout out to Maxoft for donating um, the the prizes to, for this tournament, as well as you know, pro, you know, being the official sponsor of Nintendo products in Singapore. Uh, with that, I'll be seeing you guys at the next tournament, probably. Okay, at the next tournament that we are going to stream. So until then, this is uh, Shang Six One Eight Three signing out. Thanks.